E6 is very unique compared to other teams. If you look at their team, they got three basically bait in M. Ruiz, Cade, and Proto. They're really fast in the other team's face and then just have General in the back just kind of shooting over them. They're, that's how they like to play. Optic is a good team because sometimes if they don't have the teamwork, their individual skill would pull through. They have very, very good composure as a team, so you can't count them out on anything. We went lightly against them last week. We didn't really show much of our strategy in Search and Destroy especially. We would 3-0 E6 this time around. The matchup between Enigma 6 and Optic Gaming would have to all be dependent on those first two maps. We choked two 100 point leads in the first maps. If we win that game, we I'm very confident it would have been a 3-0 or 3-1 both times. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty Global Pro League Stage 1 Playoffs presented by the PlayStation 4. We still have two more games to bring to you this evening, and they are both elimination matches, both going to be, of course, from that loser's bracket. Up next on the main stage, Optic Gaming have a bit of a rematch versus Enigma 6. Obviously, we saw it in the groups, Momo. And some of those games were, were a little closer, or, or maps rather, were a little closer than maybe a lot of people thought. So going into this one, kind of where are you on the fence? Uh, I'm definitely favoring Optic. It's very hard not to. Uh, they've just come off a huge win versus Enviers. And that's, that's for me, you know, a top, top five team in the world right there. And going against Enigma 6, yes, they've been individually very, very good. And the likes of Uplink, they've been super strong. Uh -huh. But I don't know if they've got what it takes to take Optic on two hard points, two s and Ds. I'm leaning towards the green wall. Fair enough. Obviously, Matt, you're joining us on the desk for the first time this weekend. I know. It's a bit about time. I, I'm Great. so tired of watching Phil. <laughs> Great to have you on the I desk. Love you, Phil. Obviously, Aix had absolutely no faith in Enigma Six coming in. You heard him in, in the closing segment uh, uh, before the commercial break. Do you have faith? Any faith at all? Uh, I, I mean, a little bit. I, I kind of agree with Phil. Actually, uh, you know, they did play them tough during the groups, and I know some of these same maps in this series are going to be ones that they played during the group stages and they played them tough on. Okay. But it's such a different beast trying to knock out a team like Optic Gaming as opposed to taking a game off them in groups, right? I mean, we've seen them drop series and group play before to some teams they probably shouldn't have. It, once it's elimination time, we get into the bracket, they're a completely different team. Uh, I would find it very hard to believe Enigma 6 wins this one. Looking at that map set, Retail Hardpoint, Crusher S&D, Frost Uplink, the first three, Merc. Where? Not, not good for E6, I think. <laughs> uh, if you look at the maps that they played them close on, it was Scorch Hardpoint and Breakout Hardpoint. Obviously, some comebacks, some great holds from Optic in that group play. And then Frost Uplink. That was the one uh, Uplink that Optic was able to beat Enigma 6 on, and where we saw sort of an Enigma 6 struggle uh, last night. So, you know, they definitely want to get that throwback. You, you know, that's where they sort of beat Optic, so it's going to be tough for Enigma 6. Well, excited to get this one underway. Optic Gaming versus Enigma 6. Loser goes home. It's an elimination match, and I believe it's about to begin, so we can set it down to our casters for the series. Bucket and chance. That's right. It's time to party Optic Gaming Enigma 6. It's a rematch from group week number four, so we'll see what's going to happen here. Optic Gaming, if you remember last time, they basically cruised past Enigma 6 both times, but as you heard in the interview with General, they choked 100 point leads in back to back series both times in game number one. So we know Enigma 6 can hang in the hard points chance. The question is, can they close out this time? Well, I, really every game mode they can hang as well. They split the uplinks one to one. Uh, the unfortunate thing for them is actually the one that they lost is going to be the one in this map set on Frost. But uh, again, you talk about them being able to hang in the hard points. Formal and Scum are, are two guys that are way at the top. Formal is far and away above the rest. And, and if he's shooting like he has in the past, there's not much you can do. And these, of course, are numbers from all of stage one, from group stages into the playoffs. And for Formal and Scump to be number one and three, that just shows how consistent they are. On the other side, you can see Enigma 6, not a single player in the top 10. That's because they spread the love around quite a bit more. I love how evenly balanced this team has shown to be. And in their matchup against Splice, they looked pretty darn solid in their respawns outside of that game one. And it's weird as well, because it's definitely an adjustment for the team. Usually it's general, baiting his three teammates, his formal called it, getting all of the kills in the world. But this time, he's normally towards the bottom of kills and deaths. He's kind of low engagements, and his teams have really picked up the slack. Uh, Kate has been pretty good, especially yeah. in respawns. He's had some monster games. And Ruiz has stepped up to the plate. And, and Proto very well might be the MVP for the squad. He's been playing outstanding. Uh, but again, they lost a tough match to Spice, but they even showed resilience as well. Again, they nearly pulled off the reverse sweep. And this is a team that beat E United. So E6 incredibly capable, but again, 
again, on the flip side, it's Optic Gaming, and we talk all the time about how good they are. And there's rumors that M. Ruiz could be retiring after stage one. So we could see potentially his last series right here. We'll have to see what happens after the tournament, of course. But to open things up, it is going to be Enigma 6 into the hard point first. And there you see Proto jumping in on the late push. He checks the flank and then surges forward to take out Scump and Formal. That's four down for Optic Gaming. Total control for Enigma 6. A good start. And that's what you need coming into this match as the underdog. Yeah, this is a fantastic start. Proofy actually talked to us a bit about this. Uh, he was telling me that a lot of times the indication about how the entire map is going to go on retaliation is based upon this very first hill. He said if you get more than a 30-point lead, that is basically saying that they're going to be able to pull off the map. Uh, of course, though, you see E6. They went up by 23. Optic Gaming bounces right back. They're not letting any weird things go down from the first hill. I was going to say, as history has shown us, you can go up 100 points on Optic Gaming and they'll still find a way to mount a comeback. This time around, though, it looks like Optic will have the advantage at the end of hill number one, and we're going to see this rotate to the lower street. Karma just sees a perch general, takes out general, and then M. Ruiz. Formal's going to find Proto, three down. Cade can't push in alone here. He's going to try and challenge from the stairs. Trades out one kill, but it's formal again in the feed, and Karma is just patrolling all over this hotel. Yeah, definitely trying to control these power positions up by Platt. If you have access to Platt, you have access to essentially the rest of the map. You're only five seconds away from everywhere. Formal, though, huge kills inside of the hill. Those are your defense. Those are the kills that matters most. Uh, and again, 41 seconds in the hill, and he's 5-2. and two. Uh, Very good start for him. And again, it reflects. We talk about those hard point leaderboards. He was sitting on top with that 1.36 KD, trying to keep up his performance. Optic fell to phase last night, but they were able to split the hard points. And Optic overall, out of all the teams playing in stage one, has the best hard point record. I believe they're 11 and 1 after the series against phase. They were perfect 10 and 0 throughout group stages. And they're looking strong early. You got Karma 7 and 3, 8 and 3 now out of formal as he does land the rocket but Proto was able to pick up the kill, so not much more than that. Yeah, it, it's about to get rough. Opti Gaming, they're going to be, well, not in full control. Scump's going to fall, so you see that market control going to E6 for the moment. But, of course, you got two players for OG sitting inside the hill. The pinch is coming in, and players pushing up top from bridge. That's going to be general from the side. And Ruiz there is going to be in the feed as well. Krim, of course, though, for the trade, has another gunfight inside the hill, and there you go. And Ruiz, the guy who might be retiring, able to pick up two. And Ruiz, I hope this man stays around for a while because he has shown up big here in the Stage 1 playoffs. Phenomenal gun skill demonstrated last night. That fight, he will fall at the hands of Karma Skump. Proto all trading kills back and forth, but it's Skump's two-piece that will allow Optic to push up once again. Now, Cathedral has about 10 points left. Optic is already set up for broken. It's Skump, you pushed up halfway across the bridge and then pulls back, knowing I have the primary entrance shut down. You guys watch the left and the far right, and we're good. Yeah, interesting decision as well. Again, Proto, he gave up 10 seconds of hill time for the scrap over on Cathedral or Grave, whatever you like to call it and amounted to absolutely nothing. That's a clean four down in Optin Gaming's favor. Now again, as this game goes later on, if this turns into a close one, you gotta think, how big of an impact could those 10 seconds have had? Uh, of course, though, decision is a solid one. It's understandable as to why, but right now, the slaying power for Optin Gaming is just way too strong. They were taking a 10-point gamble in hopes of breaking Optic from getting a full 60. So far, Optic has 37 uncontested points here on the broken hard point. You can see Crim6, last member alive from Optic, finally gonna be gunned down. It's Cade, his killer, who'll be jumping into the hard point for now. Optic Gaming, though, they just took out three members and they're staggering up, ready to push. As I say it, you get a little bit more help for Cade and Optic is gonna give up the scrap time. They have about a double lead here. 120 to just 60 points here for Enigma 6. Optics is going to actually lose the gunfight at short range. Proto hits the melees, and he will be able to get early control. General, last man up here. Will he be able to lock it in? Two more challengers coming. He's got reinforcements. Krim's traded out, and Krim is going to bait him out to the platform where he finds himself a double kill. Scumps back inside, and Optic score keeps going up and up. Uh, I'm going to call it here early. If General doesn't turn his performance around, that's going to be the dagger in E6. He's the player that normally is the backbone of the team, and here he is at 6 and 15. Uh, it's just not acceptable. Again, backs are against the wall. This is the loser's bracket. Uh, they need him to perform at his best. And you see Proto for the flip side. We talked about him maybe being that MVP. 
15 and 10. He's trying to replace that role. He's doing everything he can, but you can see the score so far, it's just not enough. Proto has more kills than Cade and General combined. Right now, General and Cade, they're looking at 12 and what is that, 32? Not the good scoreboard there. Triple negative between these two players. They got to turn up. Formal on the back end is going to use the FTL jump to stay alive and is able to pick up the kill on General. Dodges about two bullets, and that's all Formal needs to get a kill. Scump setting up, pre-aiming, but the flank could be coming in any moment. M. Ruiz is going to try and get that pick, but you see those two arrows. It's going to be Formal set up alongside with Karma. They have the back lockdown. You got Crim6 pushing out the front spawns. Everyone is going to be popping up lower street here, and this could be a full 60 hold on the bridge. Yeah, that is just brutal. You saw his point. Basically, as soon as Formal gets that FDL kill, uh, those players are spawning up at the next hard point, and that's as far away as you're going to get from this bridge. Uh, again, because Opti Gaming was able to push out each curve side, and, and again, that's a fantastic hold. That is about as good as you're ever going to see on that hill, and, and that's just honestly incredibly unfortunate for E6 that that, that happened to them. The score has gotten kind of ridiculous. Now, Opti Gaming, again, in the past, they've made those 100-point comebacks. Well, E6, now they're in their shoes. They're going to have to do the same. The general is broken right now. 6 and 20. He hasn't picked up a kill in the last 90 seconds. Cade, he's only picked up one kill in the last 90 seconds. Meanwhile, Skump, in the last 90 seconds, he's on a five streak. You got a four streak for formal finally shut down. Krim was lighting it up on a three streak as well. Everything going well for Optic Gaming. They are the first to 200 points, and they are 50 away from taking game number one. Oh, yeah, and that, that's game. You earn streaks, you're going in a graveyard. That's pretty much the deciding factor. They can give up the early rotations. It's not a problem. You saw the first time around, that's exactly what Formal did, and he just had the Trinity Rocket, and Stump has absolutely everything. Right now, OG, they're up, I, I think, nearly 30 in the kills department. It's a pretty ridiculous stat line. Uh, it, it's honestly a pretty embarrassing performance so far from E6. General did pick up a kill and then turn it into two. So a little bit of momentum, but late in this game, way too late. Proto, I'm so impressed that he's able to stay positive. You have three teammates going negative. That is just speaking to the individual caliber, a player that's just charging with the K-bar and winning one-on-ones, but he needs support. And it's so hard to get support when you got bombs raining on you. Before the bombs can land, Karma's picking up the kills with the NV4. He's hunting for more. You got Formal there as well. Everything is going optics way. Look at those blue arrows all the way across the map. You're funneling straight into three crosshairs and Formal is not missing another two-piece. Go for three. Well, the good news right now for E6 is that Opti Gaming cannot win on this hill. However, the bad news is that they're still down by about 130 points. It is not good looks. This is definitely just the green wall show. Uh, your lowest performing player right now is Crim6, but he has the most time on the hill, and he still is managing to be positive. Again, that's about as good as you can get. Uh, this is the second time we've seen E6. They give up those final 10 seconds of scrap time on the Cathedral Hill, which at this point, it's an absolute necessity that they do so. However, However, last time around, OptiGaming was able to hold. You see Skump is able to pick up two. Krim inside the hill, I think he just got camoed on. So that's unfortunate for him, but Skump's around the backside. He's got that reactive, able to get one. Though Proto, again, coming up big for the team. He's on a five streak as well. He's got some streaks of his own, trying to breathe some life into this E6 squad. Proto is doing everything in his power, including just wall dodging. He is bouncing side to side. Knows there's a challenger in the back, but he, gotta, he has to keep scoring. He wants to stay in here and earn some points. A big win there, showing off the gun skill against Karma. Last time I did some numbers, Optic was averaging about a 30-point kill lead here in the KD spread. That is one of the biggest blowouts we have seen in a hard point. Despite it, Enigma 6 is up over 130 points, but Optic is knocking on the door. They need just 15 more, and it's going to take them one more hard point to close this out. And you can even hear those streaks are getting called in. And Well, E6 is actually going to get a four down as a result. You see Proto was able to pick up one. General got two in that engagement. Uh, again, this is an absolute desperation mode they have to sit inside this hill and then the next hill and then the next hill just to keep it alive so out to gaming they honestly they can play for kills at this point they have the option to do essentially whatever they want you see proto he's going to be helping out his team even while he's racking up the time using that scarab as an extra man scouting players getting them weak as well so the information the team is nice but again they're trying to keep them away from a very contest heavy hill out to gaming on the prowl
Krim was a half bullet away. And there you see Emma Ruiz clean it up. On the balcony, it's Proto faster than Formal. And with that kill, he is going to tie the lead in the lobby. He and Formal with identical stats, 30 and 19 each. One minute, 13 seconds to 115. Proto playing so well, but you need a supporting cast. Cade shut down. General couldn't get anything going. M. Ruiz is your second best player. He's also the second most involved in the hill. So you got two guys going off here for Enigma 6, but all four for Optic Gaming are rolling. And this should be it, Chance. 248 to 170. Enigma 6 holds on for one more hard point, but it's done there on the bridge. And, and again, I, I think after a game like that, you might see General get demoted to captain or lieutenant or sergeant, uh, something in the lower ranks. That is just not a performance you can have. You're sitting at, what, 6 and 22, something along those lines. And, and again, props to Proto. Played phenomenally. You can see he had that frenetic pace to him, just that play style. Uh, so crazy, pinging around on those wall runs. But everyone from Optic has shown up today with their backs against the wall. Uh, very nice game one for them. You know, I wish I could watch a little bit more of General and Kate in that game just to see what's going wrong. Are they getting double teamed every fight? Are they getting flanked constantly? Because if you looked at the minimap, Optic had about one player inside the hill, a second player close to that hill, and then it was Crim6 and Karma on opposite sides, always pushing out and looking for spawners, often with Formal there to back them up. It just seemed that you couldn't get close to the hard point. Optic was too strong. And when all four of these players are shooting the way they are, you have to meet that firepower if you want to pull off a victory. Yeah, and they're doing things we just don't see very often. Again, that bridge hard point the second time around, I think that's only the second time we've seen that this weekend where they're able to just force the spawns out into that lower street. Uh, again, it's very difficult to do, and it took an FDL play, honestly, to pull that off. Formal made a pretty nice play on a guy in bridge. Uh, but again, those are the plays that just win you games, and it, it was a dominant performance. There's not much more you can say. All right, game one, it's done. Optic wins it once again, just like in the previous two matchups that we saw in the group stages. It's Optic off to a fast start. But coming up next, it's going to be Search and Destroy Crusher, a map that Optic struggled on going up against FaZe. And Enigma 6, they're known to have the best first blood percentage on this map. And coming out of groups, they got first blood on Crusher 83% of the time. They were always involved. But even though they got the most first bloods, they also took the L. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a good news, bad news situation. They get the first bloods, and then they find a way to throw the rounds away. Uh, actually, they played Opti Gaming on this map. It went 10 rounds. They got eight of the 10 first bloods, and they still lost 6-4. Uh, so again, they are throwing rounds away. Uh, and it's one of those things, you know, Optic was even talking about it formal in his interview. He said, when we played against E6, we made sure we're not giving away any of our S&D strats. Uh, we played it basically as basic as you possibly can, very generic style, saving all the goods for playoffs when the money is on the line. So uh, Optic Gaming, they were thinking a tournament in a head, in a sense, specific to their strats that they're keeping. So uh, if they can pull something out of the bag here, honestly, it, it might be a very nice game too for them as well. Optic's two and one on this map hoping to go up 3-1 with another win over Enigma 6, but it's not going to be easy if Proto keeps playing the way he has in that first hard point. You know you're going to get a better game out of General and Cade. Really can only have room to go up after that first hard point. And Crusher's a map that can cause some problems. If they fix their initial issues of getting first blood but losing the rounds, you, you have to think that Enigma 6 is going to give themselves the edge here once again. It's a, a mirror matchup. Optic could be throwing some new strats at him, but clearly the new strats didn't work against FaZe. Yeah, I, it really should honestly just be a very interesting game. Uh, again, E6, they, they have the framework. It is there. They know what they need to do off the rip. They just need to put uh, their game together. And then Optic on the flip side, again, they're decent on this map. Yes, they took the L to FaZe. Uh, but again, if they have things that work, if they were trying new things out, uh, they have a larger playbook at their disposal, which should be fun. Uh, the thing I'm most curious about, honestly, is whether or not Proto is going to snipe. Because that's always one of those things that if you don't do well with it, it can come back to haunt you. But at the same time, he absolutely shut down Red Reserve in their matchup with the sniper on this map. I remember him looking over the middle lane. Urban constantly wanted to challenge or even just sprint across. And Proto was hitting the up close shots. He was hitting the range shots. He was locking down that middle of the map and then being the communicator that his team needed to set up properly at B. On the attack first is going to be Enigma 6, and we're watching the defensive setup here as Formal is pulling out the sniper and looking for first blood spots. A jumping Proto who is going to rotate back to his bomb carrier, and you can see the setup here from Enigma 6. They are waiting for an aggressive optic push. Meanwhile, player number two, that is the general on the minimap at the very bottom. He's the guy either going to call out, hey, everyone rotate over to me at B, 
or I'm coming on the flank. Well, E6 actually does this quite a bit. This is their information play style where they're waiting for their opponent to make a mistake. Uh, a lot of the times, once teams recognize that neither bombsite has gone to, whichever one is open, they'll push through to work the flank. You see Optic elected not to do that. They're actually going to give up the bomb plan, so we have an opportunity to see how they retake. But I want to point out, number four in the minimap, Cade, he's going to potentially be that guy on the flank. We're going to see how he plays it, or if he just wraps back for his team. Either way, though, Optic making their move. And Cade's got to be fast, but he doesn't know how many committed. Now you see the sniper, that bright light general is going to hide from the flashlight, and it doesn't matter. The headshot's going to land anyway from Formal. Formal with the pistol now answers back on Emruiz's double, and Cade will keep himself alive in a 1v1 now against Krim. Smart plays as well. Make sure to dip behind cover. Krim, though, is going to be on the hunt. Emperor Kate actually spots him there as well, but fires his gun. Still, though, 10 seconds left. You see the decision has been made. Kate has to recognize this. It's going to come down to the wire, but Kate knows the time well. It is a seven and a half second defuse. As soon as he sees Krim go in there at 12, he needs, okay, I just wait four seconds. I'll be there in plenty of time. It's impossible for Krim to win in that situation. And Emmer Ruiz was so clutch. He was just around the bomb site. Two members from Optic pushing in. He picks up both kills after losing General for first blood. Enigma 6 holds on, and it's Kate on the flank. Paying dividends, picks up your final two kills. Enigma 6 wins their attack. Here they are on the defensive end as Emruiz leads the charge. They're going to go meet Optic at the B bomb site. All eight players running directly at each other. And as I just now noticed it, Cade's across the map. So this is a three on four. Make it a three on three. The team kill is going to even things up at the site. And again, four on the minimap. Cade, he's going on the flank. It looks like Formal's going to be the player trying to spot that out. Meanwhile, there's going to be gunfights at start. Formal turns to the worst spot at the time. Cade's able to pick up one. Cade's able to pick up two. And his teammates swoop in to get the final kill. That's E6 going up two rounds to none. Once again, off the backbone of Cade on the flank. But Optic Gaming, this is a squad that is known to adapt. And if Formal stays in his position for 30 more seconds, for five more seconds even, he catches Cade charging in. And, and something that's worth noting on this map, Crusher, if you're watching the flank, teams do it all the time from over in that crates area, but it's very difficult because, again, you feel committed to help your team out by rock. It's a lot better. FaZe does this well. Clayster, he'll watch the flank from a, lar a lot farther back in the map, uh, and it gives you more options. We can get into that later. You see E6 once again going for that same information kind of strat. General's going to have, uh, well, quite a few players in front of him needs to get out of dodge. Dodge. Players are going to be on the hunt. Meanwhile, Proto's picking up kills as yes. well in support of his teammates. So fantastic job by there. And General was just bait right there. Perfect play. If you watch those blue arrows, General takes some gunfire, knows there's going to be someone looking to clean up the kill. And Proto's just sniping through a doorway. Doesn't miss the shot with the sniper. Makes it land. Keeps his teammate alive. Gives his team the one-man advantage. Bomb is down safely. Everything is looking good here for Enigma 6. Optic going to be surging forward with just Krim and Scump left alive and make it just Krim in a 1v4. This round is over. Oh, man. Uh, honestly, I think Optic is probably just confused after that round. For one, they spot a single player back over by the defensive B side, and then all of a sudden there's a sniper that's getting kills. That's impressive as well. Uh, well, Krim actually shot himself, is that right? Had like the one bullet, that looked a little bit weird, but either way, a bit of a supporting cast for that kill. But again, as soon as Proto picks up that sniper kill, all of Optic expects the bomb to be at B, but then it almost instantly gets planted over by A, and they got a double back. Uh, either way, they got the first blood, they won the round. Now we're gonna have a lot of action going down over by A. Karma, though, gets that first blood. <laughs> Optic says, screw this waiting stuff. We are just gonna force the issue up the gut, Krim. You see him with the ERAD paving the way. M. Ruiz, last man standing, just like Krim was last round in a 1v4. At this point, really, you just don't want to feed the camo guy. And he's going to take out Formal first, looking for more cut down from the back optic on the board. Good round by Optic. When all else fails, fly four men, hit a bomb site, hope for the best, and just take the gunfights at will. Uh, again, uh, kind of a gun skill dominant team. You see Krim is able to pick up two. They had the right guns for the occasion as well. Krim got both of those kills with the ERAD. So again, it, there's no reason Optic couldn't just fly at any bombs that they want. Uh, they do that all the time. That's been kind of their history uh, in the past couple Call of Duties. Uh, either way, though, still going to be a bit of a mountain to climb. E6 has a comfortable lead. And, and Enigma 6 just showing off their search and destroy strategies. They're able to dictate the pace. Krim picks up two, though, but it's answered back. Skump makes it just Cade left alive here for E6. And in the 1v1, Cade is going to be just tag team and outgun. Never saw the shots coming. Krim back to back rounds, opening it up with double kills with the ERAD. And here you see Karma. Going up against Cade, who is looking the other direction. Perfect shots from Karma make this 
a little bit closer. Will Optic be able to tie up the score? We're about to find out. 3-2 advantage for Enigma 6, but they've dropped back-to-back -back rounds. Well, it does appear OptiGame going to be mixing up the strats once again. You can actually see what Krim's doing from the get-go. He's watching the flank, and again, I was trying to speak about it earlier, from all the way at the back of the map, uh, it gives him and his team a little bit more options on what they want to do. Going for some picks on mid, uh, you see they actually baited him out over by B, going for that rotation. However, it does appear E6 has sniffed it out rather quickly. You see one player general on the mini-map is pushed up pretty far. Krim, though, able to get another first blood. He does get traded out, but that is going to give his teammates the information they need to make a decision on what to do by the A-bomb. And Karma's so worried about a player coming through this door, he's waiting for Skump to kind of look over that, so the bomb doesn't go down, and now Cade checks it. He's so confused. Formal picked up the kill on General, so Optic still up a player in the three on two, and you're going to see Cade working with M. Ruiz, the buddy system. How do they get back in this? They know Optic's running out of time to plant, so they're probably making their way to B. Well, the FTL can certainly cause confusion around this B-bomb site. There's a lot of tight corridors you can get through very quickly, but uh, interesting to see if he tries to pull it off. He's going to get that first blood. Now it's just a straight-up 2v2, and they know the players are going to be piled up over by crates. M. Ruiz has that K-bar. Going to have a player just over top. Went to the gunfight as well. They buddy up, and he's able to pick up both kills. That's a 2v3 clutch. That's E6 going up 4-2. to Enigma 6, a 2v3 clutch. An incredible gun skill by M. Ruiz at the end of that fight. Cade opening it up with the E-Rad, made it a two-on-two. Two. They didn't rush in. They wait a moment. And then look at these shots, knowing the pressure's coming. Goes for the player on the high wall run first, and then just guns down formal, landing every bullet. And, and there's a couple things E6 can learn from the past couple rounds. Don't play aggressive at A. Krim has been on point with the E-Rad in that general vicinity. If you're going to go there, make sure you're passive, and do not flank anymore. That pass round, general is working. The flank, Opted Gaming recognized that. Three players started to rotate back to hunt him down, and of course, that gives him the advantage, but you got to clutch up. Now, though, Opted Gaming playing aggressive on defense, flying heavy. Looks like kills are getting traded out at the start, but it's going to get wild. And Formal shows up, picks up two. Proto win the 1v3. Proto's going to fall. And someone for Optic Gaming in these chaotic situations always manages to pick up two kills. Twice it's been Krim. This time Formal, again, those long lines aside over by Krace. He's going to make that play happen. And honestly, the MVP of that round for me is the trophy systems. Trophies thrown down allow Optic to surge through the grenades that were coming their way with guns out. They came firing and they win the quick trade as all eight players clashed. Here we go, round number eight. Centurion's gonna be placed down at the bomb site indoors and M. Ruiz is just gonna tuck tail and run all the way back to his squad over at B because Optic's about to hit this with four men up. Well, the Centurion might turn out to be uh, a little bit worthless. It might not see any action at all, although that Scarab is gonna back Optic Gaming off. Uh, at least just for the moment. So the information is there. OG is going to be hanging out by the B bomb site. Instead of rapping, though, OG is going to push. Proto going to be able to get that first blood. Skump, though, again, making the big play. He's the one that's able to pick up, too, giving OG the man advantage. M. Ruiz, though, he's going to even things out. That trade does not come in. And you can see Cade looking back and forth so frantically. Again, these are these chaotic situations that Optic so far has thrived in. But they got to make a decision. Pushing on the outside. Krim with the E-Rad going to give him the gunny. And of course, now M. Ruiz. Left in that 1v2. And it looks like Ruiz was spotted. Just one bolt away from elimination. Stays up, but not for long. Optic coming back big. They were down 3-1. They bring it back. Enigma 6 looks like they're going to pull away with the game. And then all of a sudden, it's 4-4. That's tough, man. Uh, again, it's the two-piece after two-piece in these chaotic situations that OG's been in. able to come out on top. They need to keep playing aggressive. Uh, that's where they've been at their best. So uh, even on defense, I think they should be making moves. And of course, you see at the A bomb site, E6 has been getting shut down, but they're going to go back and play it a little bit safe. I think Proto is the player that's worked up into you, and Opti Gaming is actually completely giving this up. So that might just be a counter read right there for E6. They're going to get this bomb down for free. The last two rounds have been four on four, just straight up gunfights, and Optic has won both of them. So now you see in round nine here, Optic staying together. The four man group all wants to hit at once. When they do, they're going to run into M. Ruiz first, who has been kind of the star player for the squad in search today. He's eight and six. He has three bomb plants as well. Crim six 
He could go for a ninja, it looks like. Instead, they're looking for the kills. Out comes Krim. He goes fine, picks off Proto, but M. Ruiz and General are waiting. Skump's gonna take out Ruiz, so it's General and Cade going up against just Formal, and Formal is gonna go huge! General first, then Cade, the bomb third, with about a second and a half to spare. God, if Formal just said, get off me, I'm the best in the game, what's the deal, man? That was insane. Again, Optic Gaming, when it's those chaotic situations, someone gets the two-piece. This time it was in a one versus two, and this time Formal clutched up. You saw the decision-making as well for Optic Gaming. Uh, Krim was having that debate, should I hop on bomb? Do you guys have it covered? They said no, let's flood it out, get the kills. Uh, honestly, the strat didn't work out, but Formal just made it happen in the end. Uh, and again, another just tough, tough round for E6 to have to swallow. Now they got to bounce back and try and win two in a row. Uh, and frankly, Krim has been playing fantastic. Formal and Skump have shown up when they need it. it it's very difficult, and you see they're pushing the save bombsite. Ruiz just peaked the full army. Optic fully loaded. Gunning into A. Formal's going to lead the charge up top, waiting for someone to push on the far flank. It's going to be general, and a camo is going to be used. It looks like we're going to only have Skump up here as everything's going down at once. Skump, last man alive, has a reactive to work with, and he just may pop it here to try and clutch the 1v2. Can Skump get the ace? Not going to happen. God, Skump nearly with the 1v4 again. The big plays almost came down, and that would have been the biggest of all. Uh, E6, though, uh, it got interesting, and you see, well, the reactive armor is going to get shut down. Krim burned his payload as well. Uh, I'm not sure how many E6 has there at, at their disposal, but uh, round 11, this is where it all matters most. E6, they, they need this win. I love that kill cam from General. Hits eight on Skump. It took quite a few bullets to take him down, but they force a round 11. Here we go. This is the series, in my mind, for Enigma 6. You have to win right here if you want a chance against Optic in a best of five. And I think it's just Cade and Formal with those FTLs as well. Just something to keep in the back of your mind. Opti Gaming, though, they're going to have the full stack in. That is a team kill. I think a nade might have taken that scare about, but that is not the way you want to start the round. Formal, though, he's able to counter back with the kill. Kills going down everywhere. The active chemo getting popped. This is a 1v2. Proto needs to go clutch. He's able to find the first. Going for the second as well. The challenge comes over. Oh, top. Krim! It's Krim 6! Down a player. Optic pulls it out. Wow, what a play from Krim. Proto had it in his hands. He had the shots on Krim. Krim gives the wiggle and lands every K-Bar bullet. As Optic now jumps out to a 2-0 lead. Chance, you're biting your finger. Break it down for me. What went down? Uh, just the most heartbreaking thing possible for E6 just went down. So they got gifted the round as soon as that Scarab team kill comes in. Uh, again, I think a nade set that off, so it's not like Opti Gaming made a terrible decision. But right. You shouldn't stand near Scarabs when that happens, especially if you don't have Blast Shield. But again, we don't know perks. But that happens. Formal still managed to bounce back, get the first blood. And then again, someone for Optic picked up a two-piece. They get that advantage. And then Proto, again, had the camo, used it perfectly. Just that it's the ERAD, man. The ERAD up close. He was one shot and got that final kill. Krim going clutch in the end, man. What a play. What a round 11 by Krim6 and the rest of the crew. So far after two games, Optic Gaming up 2-0. Enigma 6, they got to complete a reverse sweep, and it has to start coming up next on Uplink Frost.
Welcome back to the party. This is the Call of Duty World League Stage 1 Playoffs, and we are in the loser's bracket right now. After struggling on day one, Optic has found form here in the loser's bracket. They dispatched of Envy to start the day. Now going up against their second opponent, Enigma 6. In this match, well, this game alone for Optic is basically a $20,000 game. If you win this, you're guaranteed 40 on the weekend. Enigma 6, they are walking away with no less than 20 grand. Yeah, which is impressive, honestly. Again, this is an 18 tournament, not even a major, and you got it just under COD Champs in terms of cash prize. Not a bad pickup at all. Uh, of course, the players don't care nearly as much about the money as they do that victory in Optic Gaming. Anything less than first place is a disappointment. These guys are probably honestly disappointed sometimes when they get first place. Uh, not happy enough with yeah. the level of play. We didn't, we didn't blow them out big enough. Why did it go to the second grand final? Yeah, I, I mean, again, they opened up this tournament with a loss to FaZe. You know, they are not going to be happy about that, and they are going to be fiending to try and get that revenge. But again, uh, it's going to be a much longer tournament for Opti Gaming. they got a, quite a few wins before they get there, but still, they have to get past uh, E6 here first. E6, Uplink has been their game mode. Not necessarily on this map, though. The only team to cause problems for Optic so far in Stage 1 has been FaZe Clan, and they did cause big problems on this map, Frost. Same thing can be said, though, for Enigma 6. They look so good in their uplinks, one of the best uplink teams we saw throughout Stage 1, and they got blown out by E United here on Frost. So whoever gets the slaying battle done is probably going to win it. FaZe won against Optic last night. E United had Gunless blowing out E6. And if you, game one's any indication, this should be all optic here. They stomped General and Cade on the hard point. Yeah, I mean, if I remember correctly, when uh, OG and E6 matched up back in the group play on this map, uh, I think Optic outslayed them by like 30 something kills, like 35, 36. And, and it was one of the most insane uplink performances I've seen so far. However, Proto, Proto the god so far for E6, opens up with a three piece, early advantage going to E6, but they got to make sure to get points on that board. That drone uh, is only halfway across the map. I'll be completely honest with you, Chance. Before stage one kicked off, I couldn't tell the difference between Proto and Cade. I thought they were the same person. I got to know Proto a lot watching him throughout stage one, and he is definitely one of the rising stars in competitive Call of Duty. So fun to watch with that SMG, and you can see his triple led to that initial point as Enigma 6 strikes first with a 1-0 lead. Yeah, I mean, just for like a little uh, cheat sheet if you need a little bit of help, Proto's got the glasses and he's got the gunny. He has everything he needs to be a good Call of Duty player, and that's another four down in favor of E6. Once again, they're going to be able to try and make moves with his drone general. He's going to be pushed up the most aggressively on the map. Looks like M. Ruiz has actually passed him. Hold up. I didn't realize he was in the spawn, so that's going to be a problem. Proto again Triple able it. to pick up three, and there's a dunk coming on the board. Proto's working his way towards streaks. Absolutely, and you'd think if he goes in for the dunk, he's definitely going to be streaked out by now. Instead, they know how big of a factor he is on the map, how he needs to keep these slaves coming, and there he is flanking formal. Give him five in a row, nine and two to open things up. He's looking for his 10th kill. Oh, put the team on your back, Proto, but he is going to fall short there. Karma had the ERAD. That's the gun he needs for the situation. Still, though, you see Emma Ruiz, he was pushed far up. He's able to get two, but he gets cut down just short. And that is a nice defensive stand coming out of Optic. The positioning right there for E6 was great. That's the second time we've seen Emma Ruiz pushed up all the way to OG spawn, causing problems. Uh, of course, though, OG, they relieve the pressure. They go back on the attack, and again, they get wide out Krim, just now the last one alive for his team. And you see, he's pushed up to get Nectar. E6 does not care if he's behind enemy lines. They're just going to run away from him. They just care about the points. This map was not an issue for Optic throughout the group stages, but they are having a rough time here in the playoffs. M. Ruiz is going to slice Formal's throat with the drone and tosses it up for a one-point play. Didn't want to get greedy for the two-pointer, but it's a 4-0 lead at the end of it all. And look at Kate. He's just 4-4, four four, nine interactions total. Proto is definitely keeping the pace here. The rest of the squad focusing on the objective. And, and what you just saw exemplifies one of the things that makes E6 so good at uplink. It's one of the things that I don't think any other team does, at least not nearly as effectively. They know someone's behind them. Krim just got a kill. They know he's there. And again, they don't care. If Krim is behind him, when they go forward, he's going to be absolutely useless. And they turn it into points. They have done that time and time again. 
That was part of the reason they beat Optic Gaming back in Group 1 on throwbacks. Similar style, uh, of course, though, you see Krim. He just had the hot hand for a moment. He went on a 5 sure You see Optic Gaming, now they're on the attack. And Karma's leading the charge with the E-Rad. It's Cade who finally stops his push. Formal needs to wait for his health to come back. Scump causing problems with the E-Rad directly behind him, but both Slayers are going to be dropped. And General's going to find Krim as well. All kills going back and forth. And at the end of that fight, it's Proto walking away with the drone. He's just going to recenter that, go for the long perimeter flank as he calls in some streaks. Scouting with the Scarab, he's trying to flank Optic Gaming. The shots injure Scump. The Scarab will finish the kill. And Proto now has to chase down Optic, who's moving forward with the objective. Well, he's able to get one, but now Optic Gaming's run away with the drone as well. But that drone carry number five, Karma, he tried to do it by himself, and he was successful as well. Uh, E6 did not set up for the interception. They thought they were going to get the kills, or they got caught off guard by the aggression. But again, Optic Gaming, I said they needed to take notes from E6 and Uplink. They did just that. Good job by Karma to get something on the board. And here comes Scump to lead the charge. You have Karma on your screen going through the opposite door. Everyone's focused on the front entrance. Karma could do work here in the back. Krim, though, picks up two. You see the melee from Formal come through, and a dunk as well will make this a one-point game. Two pushes from Optic, two scores from Optic. Great execution. And it just happened so fast. That was the span of about, what, a minute and 20 seconds that OG is able to pull that off. And they're not trying to slow down either. That's going to be three kills in their favor. Scump's going for the fourth. Formal's going to be there in support. That drone just to the outside of the map, 25 seconds. That is plenty of time for them to get some more points on the board. You start off with Scump and Formal negative. Scump now positive one. Formal back to even. And Crim6 has caught some fire there getting five straight kills. Formal finally tracks down the drone, which was kind of hidden there in the corner of the wall. And it's enough time for General to get in a position. That double kill will keep our score at 4-3 going into the half. But so far, the story of this game for me has been Proto's pressure early on has enabled Enigma 6 to put some presence on the map. General, at the end of that half, laid down some nice defensive kills, but those aren't the kills you want. You want the kills in optic space, not your own. Uh, and either way, the way I see this now is that E6 has a slight score advantage. I don't think it's going to be enough. I think they need to pull something out of the bag. Uh, if you think all the way back to Vegas when they played against Optic on this map, they did an incredible job of wasting time. They get that drone control. They go to these wall runs either underneath the sub or on the outskirts of the map and waste as much time as possible. But five minutes is too much. So again, uh, they just need to hold off the pressure, try and get some points on the board, play a good second side, and they'll be good to go. And you saw the frustration from Formal there, dear. In the halftime, we went to the camera of Optic Gaming, and he is just barking out orders. And the look on his face, just pure frustration. He expects perfection from this team, and they're not getting it. To open things up, it's Enigma 6 winning the initial gunfight, running it straight through the sub bay, and they are able to put a dunk on the board. Look at the pass, the dish. No one from Optic here on the defensive end. They have to set up for the new drone. 40 seconds and four points for Enigma 6 at our second side. And Kate on the minimap, he never left Optic spawn in that like entire 45 second stretch. Meanwhile though, Optic Gaming, they're going to get that counter score as well. And, and there you can see actually the detriment of having two players in the spawn. Either way though, E6, they got that three point lead. They're still doing better on the second side thus far. So they're looking pretty good. Optic Gaming, they're the ones that are trying to stave off the pressure. Again, it, it's more important for Optic right now to try and get that drone control and keep it away from E6 as much as possible. Karma's trying to pick up that drone and he is going to drop it in the center of the map. Knows they need kills first, so just leading the way is going to be Formal once again. Formal will distract. The toss goes up, but it's too high. Cade picks up the kill on Karma as Proto cleans up Krim. So no one in your base. It's clear to move forward if you're Enigma 6, and that drone is going to be in the hands of player number four. Cade pushing it up the mini-map along the wall run. Yeah, Karma was stronger than he looked right there. Uh, and again, this outskirts wall run is actually goes back to what I was talking about. You can just waste time. It doesn't matter if he falls off the map right there. It doesn't matter if he dies, because the drone is going to get reset and at least buy his team a few more seconds to get set up. And you see three players right now for E6 kind of turtled up under their portal, waiting to push into this ice area. However, Optic Gaming is going to win. Well, all the gunfights, that's going to be three down in their favor. That's going to be more points on the board. Optic Gaming making this a one-point game. The dish and the dunk, and Karma is now at 75% towards his camo. If he keeps killing, this could be the final blow they need at the end of the game. Camo, so devastating. And you see the overdrive from 
Proto, he just picks it up, gets the dish, and then runs it straight through. Optic is doing a great job in the middle of the map, but there's definitely some holes in both teams' defense as they are just allowing each other to score effortlessly. This is back to back to back, like uh, what the rebound scores, counter scores, whatever you want to call it. Each team just picking up the drone, running straight past the enemy. Neither one wrapping back properly. But again, Optic Gaming still down by one point, and they got two players pushing aggressively. General has to go off, and there you see he's able to shut down Krim, going to slow OG down just for the moment. Yeah, that blue arrow, number two general, was the only player in the way of that drone moving forward. He picks up the kill, slows it down. Here comes Formal with a nice two-piece, but Proto and Ruiz answer right back. And after Karma takes down Proto, that will clear the way for an optic lead, 11-10. Big kills from Formal, Karma finishes. And then you see the dunk coming through. On the other end, Proto lights it up with a triple, and Ruiz finds a fourth kill. And we are going to see Enigma 6 pushing this up, but Car or, excuse me, Krim 6 is in position to play some defense here. And Scum's able to pick up two kills as well. There's the camo coming out of General, and he's gonna get shut down. Formal's gonna sniff that one out, and you see Krim able to pick up the drone in spite of Emery's picking up two. And here you can see he's just going for wasting time. He's got the overdrive as well. A minute and a half, Opti Gaming has the lead. Uh, they have a lot of options at their disposal, and they're picking up the kills as well. OG is in fantastic position. Oh, and Krim didn't see that player on the other side of the pole, but it doesn't matter. Formal has his back. Kill comes in. Here's the pass to Krim. Six overdrive play ready. Execute. It's time to fly, Krimbot. Did that drone go too far? It looks like it's going to go off the map cleared, and we will see the reset with a minute to go. This is anyone's game. A dunk takes the lead for Enigma 6. A one-point toss takes us to overtime. I, I mean, Optic can pick up the drone. They can run into their base. They can wall run off the map. They can do a lot of things. They're going to take the gunfights, though. E6, well, they're going to have an opportunity. Proto gets that last player out of their base as well. So this is it. 40 seconds. All four members for Optic Gaming are going to be up alive in their spawn. Can E6 clutch up? when it matters most. Their back's against the wall. If they lose this, they are out of the tournament. Shots going down all over the sub base. Scump is the first to land his formals in the feed, and Scump arrives again. General with the two pieces going to slow this down, but no one is up for Enigma 6. 20 seconds left. Optic could either run out the clock or put it in the final blow here. Karma looks like he wants to do both. You might as well play ring around the rosy. 10 seconds left. Gets the final throw on the board. E6, you can see they are not moving on the mini map. That is GG. Optic Gaming with the hot 3-0. Uh, and frankly, that was a good series. I'm not going to lie, the 3-0 not representative. And you see Formal with the high fives. It's all smiles. He got a quad of non-moving players to finish this game. Thank you, boys. I will pad my stats. Scump and I are staying on top of the leaderboard. What a job from Optic Gaming that first half. It looked like Enigma 6 had total control. Proto was putting on a superstar performance. But then it was Skump and Formal coming to life. Krim 6 dropping big numbers, and Karma puts in seven, make it eight points with that final toss. Uh, uh, really, in that series, you got a taste of everything that Optic can do. Uh, absolute dominant hard point that we saw. It's pretty insane, the numbers that all players were able to put up. Uh, the search and destroy, they found themselves down. They clutched up. They held their composure. They made huge plays. Pretty much every member of the team had their moment to shine as well. Uh, and then, of course, the uplink, they were down the entire time. They make the comeback in the the end. Uh, if you're an OG fan, you're very happy to see that performance. You know, Optic Gaming, they were pure in this series. It was a hot 3-0. They looked perfect in the hard point. Search and Destroy was a little bit iffy, but they got it done with Krim winning that 1v1, and then the epic comeback in Game 3 is going to seal the deal. Optic is moving on, and they're making at least $40,000 this weekend. Enigma 6 is the latest team to exit the bracket, and they will walk home with 20k. Sounds like we got Scump ready to go with Courage on the main stage right now. Let's send it over to the boys. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes, Scump from Optic Gaming as they just took down E630. Crowd, you like what you see from the green wall? Absolutely. Optic Gaming lived to see another day. A great bounce back after the rough loss yesterday. Scump, you guys look like you're, you're, you're back in form. What changed from day one to day two? Uh, nothing really changed. I think we just had a stale series against FaZe. It was our first series of the tournament, so they came in super hot. I mean, we won first map, but they turned it around very fast. Uh, we've just been playing a lot backstage. We haven't necessarily been scrimming, just playing 2v2 hard points and stuff, getting used to, you know, shooting against other players. And, uh, yeah, we're just playing better. Well, you most certainly showed that today as you took both series. Now, 
Looking back on this one, the, the hard point, you're in full control. The S and D though, round 11. First off, what happened with the scarab? It looked a little bit awkward. Want to hear from your perspective and then break down that round 11 for me from your team. Um, well, the round before that, uh, they wanted me to 1v4 Kinetic. My teammates, <laughs> my teammates were like, use it, use it, use it, run at them. And I was like, okay, uh, here I go. But um, the round 11, uh, basically, we called in a scarab because we were going to push through B-bomb and uh, try to get one of them weak and so we could push through. And they threw a jammer, and I don't think that... I think that if they jammer it, it blows up, and even if you have flak, it still kills you because I had flak. But it just killed me, and thankfully, my teammates pushed through and got the kills, so... Well, it wound up working out for you there. You clutched up that round 11, went on to take the series 3-0. But now, Seth, you've got the match you're looking forward to. Before we even start this interview, you're like, I'm more excited for this next series. It's going to be LG versus United. You will face the winner of this match tomorrow. Now, both of these teams, I think we've seen, can give you a good run for your money, especially E United. If there's a team you want to face, what are your predictions? Just give me all your thoughts because I know you're excited about this one. Uh, both of those teams are very, very good. Uh, coming into this event, I'd place those two teams with us. So it's going to be a crazy match. Who would I rather play? I really don't care. Uh, you have to beat everybody here to be able to win the tournament, especially whenever you go into losers in first round. So honestly, it doesn't matter, but I think it's going to be a great match. Well, it most certainly will be. That'll be our last match of the night, and that was Scump from Optic Gaming. OG will live on the championship Sunday. For now, though, analysts, take it away. Thank you very much, Jack. Fantastic to hear from Scump as well as he broke down a, a couple of those key moments throughout that series. Congratulations, Optic Gaming, 3-0. They live to fight on championship Sunday. Commiserations, of course, to Enigma6, who you know put up a very good show once again. I mean, yeah, it was a 3-0, but the series at times was very, very close. I mean, yeah. we'll start with map number one. Of course, it was the Retaliation Hardpoint, 250 to 170. Uh, and Merc, it just felt like Proto needed some help. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, General just off to a slow start, and but this Optic team, they were just gunning right away. You know, you had Formal, you had Chump, both playing well. It, it was just hard for an Amos 6 to sort of get back into it, but we did see a little sign of life there at the end, but I think the deficit was just too big. You did, but I mean, if General, uh, he's, look, he's like the lead slayer on this team. Like, he's the one who coming into this weekend, you know, he had great sets at Dallas, great sets during the group play. It's like, you need to show up in this one. Like, this is the one game they need you to play well in. Like, yeah. you can afford to have some up and down games in the other ones, but you see right here, struggled in game one. Yeah, and you've got two players with a combined 30 to 60, you know, negative 15 each, that's for Caden General. Like, you, you're gonna have those games, Optic Gaming, those four players are going to have those games where they're just killing every single body. Very difficult for them to come back into it. They did show signs of light, and, you know, I put my pen down for a second towards <laughs> the end. I was like, maybe, and then, uh, you know, I quickly picked it up again. Uh, but, yeah, that was uh, a good first game, uh, first map there for Optic Gaming. Absolutely was. 250 to 170, they got a ton of confidence. Then we go over to map number two. Of course, that was the search and destroy. Goes the distance. We have a round 11. Optic Gaming, of course, able to clutch up. Now, uh, Matt, I want to get your thoughts on this. Optic yeah. got 3-0 down. Then all of a sudden, Krim starts getting those first bloods. Then all of a sudden, Optic start making a little bit of a comeback. I mean, how does Krim do it? How does he? How does he do it? Why is he so he's, good? Like, he just loves like these clutch situations. Like I remember, like a few years ago, yeah. it's like Mr. Game Five. Like if you went to Game Five, like Krim would just beat you like single-handedly. Like he does this thing where he's just like, I, I think he tells his teammates, like I'm just gonna run at them. Like I don't care. And he pulls out an ERAD and just tries to force gunfights, and he wins them. Like, he just gets into his own zone. The, the first time I saw it, like, happen, like, live, like, in person was Full Sail. I remember, I think it was, like, a, it was the one where he ran around the pole on the guy oh, yeah, on yeah. Express, <laughs> and, like, he dies, and I just remember, uh, everyone dies, and I just remember Krim, like, just silently. He's like, screw it, I'm just going to kill them all. Uh, <laughs> that's all he said. That's all he said. He didn't call anything out. He just ran and just murdered everybody. One thing he was like, screw it, I'm killing them all. We, were just, we all looked at each other like, all right, this dude's crazy. He plays with so much confidence, yeah. no kind of... He's just not scared of anyone, you know? Even though he's just had a great map one, he's gone down 3-0, it, it doesn't change in round four or round five for him. And I think that's it. When you play against Krim, it's just very difficult to get in that guy's head. Well, when you think you're going to have a lead, you're thinking Optic's probably going to slow down or, or, or whenever Optic or Krim does this, but he just doesn't. He just he's completely catches people off guard because he's running down the middle of a map with an <laughs> E-Rad forcing a gunfight. Like, yeah. just ridiculous plays out of, out of Krim. One, one key point I do want to highlight, obviously we heard Skump kind of mention it as well. It was the, the round number two. 10, I believe it was. He's in a 1v4, and apparently his teammates just say, yep, use your reactive, just go for it. I mean, Matt, good play, bad play? I, I tell you what, he was damn close to killing the guy. I mean, I, I don't really hate it. I mean, I, I think going into round 11, you probably feel safer having reactive you would, on, yeah. on it. But yeah. I mean, the situation, I mean, he gets that first guy weak, like, it, you pop that reactive. I mean, there's a, I mean, what's the percentage he kills that guy? I mean, 50-50? If, if he's able to sort of slide behind, if he doesn't get a few shots off yeah. him, and 
it's, t it's tough. But, I mean, it was just one of those plays where that Skump loves to be in. You know, if he's able to close that out, everybody would have won. And that. Skump didn't really talk about it. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> in that round 11, I believe it's Frodo with the bomb for E6. And he's trying to get it down because he would have gotten camo, I believe. Yep. I don't know if Optic knew that he was trying to get bomb down and get camo right away. But it, it actually, their push worked out in their favor because they were trying to push him off of the bomb there. Well, it was a fantastic round 11. Optic Gaming take the series. They go up 2-0. Well. Then we go over to the uplink. And uh, again, it, it was a fantastic, fantastic uplink for, for E6. It was 4-3 at the half, Momo. And, I mean, it, it was just relatively even slaying as well across the board. But then all of a sudden, we go into the second half and E6, they get four points in 40 seconds. Yeah, it was incredible stuff. I, I, I just want to say about Proto, he's impressed me so much across this whole playoff kind of uh, weekend itself. He's been playing phenomenally individually, even on games where they're going down. But it was really interesting to see Optic Gaming, and you don't see this a lot, they were almost playing counter cap. You know, this were every time, like, they let them score two and they were like, we'll just go middle, we'll outnumber them, we'll score two of our own. They did that for two or three of the, you know, the two-point plays. Uh, but in the end, that's when the payloads in, came in. You can see it from Karma, he didn't even need his. Uh, but it was great play from Krim, even though he didn't convert. And uh, I, I just think in the end, it's just Optic being Optic, the clutch team that they are. Like, it happens time and time again. And this just reminds me of sort of just their, their regular season group play. I mean, there were so many games where Enigma 6, they have an early yeah. lead. And they just allow a slight opening, and, and that just allows Opti to give me a back in the game, and we know how difficult it is to close it up. You just feel like Enigma 6 is like one guy away, like one yeah. player away from like really being like a, a, a team that can contend like I, for like your top, like, you know, four or fives. They were one map away from being top three here. It, it yeah. was so close. When you go back and look, look at the series, they, they lose to Splice, and then, you know, they obviously lose to Opti. Those are two tough losses, but yeah. literally, they're a few rounds away from being top three here, which nobody would have suspected they did. A little bit more consistent. Agree. Slaying and they're there. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, one key moment as well, just to go back to that uplink uh, memo. General, uh, 11 10 down, he uses his camo, doesn't get points. Yeah. I feel like that was a must. It, it was hard. I, I think it, you know, it wasn't necessarily a bad play. He was on his own. That was the problem. So if he did go down, there was no one to kind of jump in there. Uh, but he just kind of tr tried to bunny hop his way through. I think if he's going to use camo, he needs to be higher than that. He needs to do something a little bit different. Uh, very, very unfortunate. Again, just to touch on what these guys said. They could have beat Splice. Those first three maps, map two and three, they, that could have gone E6's way. I think it's very sure. tough losses for them. And I just hope they come back stronger. I hope they take this fifth six. They go into Anaheim and we're going to see them in, you know, stage two. They're going to be great. I've, uh, I've got a lot of hope for these guys. I think it's a fantastic weekend for them. I mean, they, they can't like take this loss and be upset about it. I mean, they, they come in like a lot of people probably expect them seventh, eighth. They get yeah. in. Fifth, sixth, they played a lot of teams very tough. Like, BD United. I like, know. Like, just think of their matchups and how close they were. You, you're not disappointed at all. There's no, no way. Uh, I think Proto really proved himself as well. Without a doubt. Yeah. Unbelievable playmaker throughout this weekend, so props to him. But of course, commiserations to Enigma 6. They have been eliminated from the Stage 1 playoffs. Prop to Gaming, however, they will progress through to another round in that loser's bracket where they await the victor of E United versus Luminosity. In just talking to, I mean, Scrum sort of said it on stage, these were sort of the two teams they were a little bit nervous playing because they, they're games that series yeah. where, you know, you look at Dallas, game five with Luminosity, all the epic finals with E United. These are teams who know they can play Optic well. Yeah, I mean, LG, E United, and Splice have probably been the teams that, outside of FaZe, obviously beating them this weekend, right. uh, have been the teams that we've seen play OG the toughest. So I think you, them seeing this next match or one of those two teams is going to go home, I think yeah. it's a pretty good for Optic. First game tomorrow, right? Then they got to beat one of them tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the bad part. Yeah. It's like one of them's Tough. gone, but you got to play one right away. <laughs> it's going to be one of those matches where whoever's in it first, man. It, you got to make sure you're yeah. in early, warm yeah. it up, shooting some bots. Definitely got to make sure that you're uh, your shot is on, that's for sure. But we still have plenty of Call of Duty to come here at the Stage 1 playoffs and plenty of Call of Duty for the rest of the year as well. We should mention, of course, the Cotton Champs tickets are on sale. You can purchase yours at mlg.tv forward slash cwlchaps. First time uh, on that East Coast. Of course, we're going to Orlando, Florida for this one, August 9th to August 13th. Cannot wait for that event. But of course, we still have one final match to play to close out the day two of the Call of Duty Global Pro League Stage 1 playoffs. Optic Gaming has survived and continued their run through the loser's bracket. Up next, however, it's E United battling it out with Luminosity as they fight for their lives. Who will progress to play Optic Gaming tomorrow morning in loser's round three? Find out after this.